Namaste everyone here at Booktube. Welcome to my channel, Hamsa Vahini Bajra Astra. I'm Ahuna. Today's video is going to be about my TBR for an upcoming readathon, which is going to commence from the 18th of October and will continue till the 31st of October. And this readathon would be the Black SFF Athon. And this has been created by Chloe from Thistle and Bears, and it has been hosted by Chloe from Thistle and Hers, Lucy from Lucy Reads, Najeri from Onyx Pages, Noria from Chronicles of Noria, and Arlene from Lock Pressed Books. I have posted a link to their respective announcement videos in the description box below. So in case if you would like to know more about the Black SFF uh, which is going to commence um, from this 18th of October, do please click on the links. It will take you straight to their announcement videos. Now, uh, the there are approximately eight prompts in this particular readathon, and I have most of these books uh, which I've selected for um, this particular readathon on my Kindle. So I've also plotted. Um, I mean put a summary of the plot points which are available at the back of each of the books uh, of the Kindle version in a few pages. So you might just hear me or it's rustling a few pages or you will just see a few pages turning. But uh, what I would like to do is uh, every book that I uh, mention over here, I would also be giving a brief uh, summary of the plot points so that in case if you're interested, you definitely can also check with those books or read it if you want to, because they are absolutely fantastic. Now, uh, the first prompt of this particular readathon is the group read which is the book called the jumbies which has been written by tracy baptiste now um this is a spine tingling tale which is rooted in the caribbean folklore about an ordinary girl who must use her extraordinary bravery and a bit of magic to save her island home from jumbies the scary spirits which haunt the forest, Corinne Lama isn't afraid of anything, not scorpions, nor the boys who tease her, and certainly not jumbies. They're just trickster parents who make them up to frighten their children. Then one night, Corinne chases an agouti all the way into the forbidden forest. Uh, those shining yellow eyes that follow her uh, to the edges of the trees, they couldn't belong to a jumbie, or could they? When Corinne spots a beautiful stranger speaking to the town witch, at the market the next day she knows something unexpected is about to happen and when this beauty Severine uh, turns up at Corinne's house to bewitch her father Pierre to claim the entire island for the Jumbies Corinne must call on her courage and friends and learn to use ancient magic she didn't know she possessed to stop Severine to and save her island home so this is what is the plot point, the main plot of this particular book. Now, the next prompt is to read an LGBTQ plus main as a main character, and I have um, coupled this up with uh, the social justice oriented prompt. And for both these prompts, I have chosen the same book, which is The Hood Witch, which is a collection of poems written by Felita Higgs. Now, Felita Higgs is a debut poet. And um, in this collection of poems, she is trying to tell a story. And the, it is about the reclamation of power for black and non-binary people whose bodies have become the very weapons used against them. It tells a story uh, of a young person who discovers that they they are something that it and will survive a whole century of hunt. Hicks speaks about giving up her child for adoption, uh, mourning the death of her fiancé, embracing the non-binary femi body, preserving in the face of medical malpractices, domestic abuse and police violence. And these poems find people transformed, remade out of smoke and iron into cyborgs, wolves, witches, machines or simply beings who are capable of seeking justice in a world that refuses them the option. Exploring the intersections of modern mysticism, Christianity and Afrofuturism um, in a sometimes urban and natural setting, Hicks finds a place where everyone everywhere is hands in the air, where you know they're going to push and pull it together and they just like they learned to. It is a place of natural magic where someone like Hicks can get, have more than one name and where they can see both the dead 
or they can be both dead and alive and both a mortal and a god and in its evocation of witchcraft this book provides further examples of efforts to reclaim the language of witchcraft and demonology from the accusers and repurpose the language to assert a femi vision emphasizing specifically black diasporic relationships with witchcraft and also attending to particular violences and precarities that haunt black girlhoods. So this is going to be a very interesting read. So I've coupled that for two prompts, LGBTQ plus main characters and social justice oriented. Now the next prompt for this readathon is the horror prompt, which is to read um, an SFF book which has horror in it. So for this, I have chosen to read The Haunting of Tramcar 015 by P. Jelly Clark. Now, this is a historical fantasy fiction uh, or SFF fiction as well, and it has been the finalist this year for the Hugo, Nebula, and the Locus Awards. Uh, the plot line goes as it is. Uh, set in the scenario of um, or to set in the backdrop of Cairo in the year 1912 where the case starts as a simple one for the Ministry of Alchemy, Enchantment and Supernatural Entities handling a possessed tram car. So soon however Agent Hamid Nasser and his partner Os Ansi Yusuf are exposed to a new side of Cairo staring with suffragettes um, secret societies and sentient automations in a race against time to protect the city from an encroaching danger that crosses the line between the magical and the mundane. So this is going to be a really fantastic um, book, I believe, and uh, I'm quite excited in reading this. Now, the next prompt is the Disability Rep prompt, and for this, I have chosen a very beautiful book, which is called The Labyrinth Archivist, which is a Broken Cities novella by Day El Mohammed. I have heard a lot of good things about this book, and the cover of this novella is absolutely gorgeous, and um, it deals with a blind girl called Azula, and Azulia, and and the labyrinth is a place where all the, I would say, the races or the interraces uh, mix together. Not only mixed, but they uh, come together and it's a halt station for them. And uh, they are supposed to go about their business peacefully. And uh, it's a place where they can actually rest. So, uh, However, uh, the labyrinth... Uh, archivists are people who through conversations gain knowledge and they are there to um, put all the information together from all the travelers or the space travelers that I find from different planets and there are different sorts of aliens who are there and they must be treated with care so uh, however there is someone who is who has suddenly started attacking uh, the uh, people from the labyrinth and um, there's a blind girl called Azulia who has not qualified to be uh, an archivist in the labyrinth. Uh, however, she's the only person who can actually help to uh, find out who the murderer is and stop. So this is um, going to be a very exciting read and um, it I have chosen this for disability rep. Now, the next um, prompt is author who is not from US or Canada and for this I have chosen uh, the anthology or the sff anthology which has been written by dilman dilla and uh, it is called a killing in the sun now i believe that this anthology has all the stories in short form for all the prompts but i was not sure what sort of uh, stories there were and i was not sure whether all the prompts were fulfilled otherwise i would have just used this book for this entire readathon however I'm still going to read all the stories because the rest of the books that I have collected or the rest of the novellas that I've got are absolutely excellent and I'm quite excited to read them. Now, the next prompt is uh, to read a book which has gods or which features gods as characters. And for this, I have chosen to read A Taste of Honey by Kai Ashante Wilson. Now, I'm just going to try and have a look whether I can... Yes, I have written a synopsis of the plot point from the back of the book. So it reads as that it's a love story. So I'll be um, combining this with the next prompt in Black SFFathon, which is also to read a love story. So uh, this is a love story, which is complex, beautiful and painful. And uh, the place where this story takes place is called the Olorum. And the time is uh, long after the towers have left the world, and but before the dragons have come to Deluca. Now there is an emperor 
who has brought us delegation of guards and diplomats at Olorum. And uh, there is a boy called Akib, or a young man called Akib, who is the son of the master of the beasts and is a royalty and is in love with the delicate soldier Lucrio. Now, amidst the saintly canon, gossip, gossiping servants and the furious disapproval of his father and brother, the lovers are swept into um, hardship which is unknown. So it's going to be um, a beautiful love story. It's a gay romance as well. And um, it does have gods as characters. So this would fulfill two of the prompts, which is goddess characters and about love. Now, the next prompt is uh, to read a book which is not set on earth. And for this, I have chosen to read Binti by Nedi Okrafor. And um, this has been the winner of the Hugo and Nebula Awards for 2015. And it's all about Binti, who is uh, the first of the Himba people ever to be offered place at Osma University, the finest institution of higher learning in the galaxy. But to accept the offer, it will mean giving up her family to travel between the stars among the strangers who do not share her ways or respect her customs. So the knowledge comes at a cost, one that Binti is willing to pay, but her journey will not be easy. The world she seeks has been long warred with uh, Medusae, an alien race that has become the stuff of nightmares. So Usma University has wronged the Medusae and Binti's stellar travel will bring her within her deadly reaches, within its deadly reaches. So if Binti needs to survive the legacy of the war, not of her own making, she will need the gifts of her own people and the wisdom enshrined within the university itself. But first she has to make it there alive. So this is going to also, I've never read Binti at all. So this is the first time that I'm reading Binti, although it has been released in 2015. So I'm quite excited to read this. Most of the um, books that I have chosen are centered under Afrofuturism. So and I'm also going to be reading uh, some of the short stories um, for uh, this readathon, uh, which it has been um, posted or uh, in on the internet and uh, a link to that particular uh, website has also been given um, by the um, hosts of the of this particular readathon and i was just going through those stories they were absolutely wonderful and i will try and complete as much as i can now the fact is that I will not be here from the last week of October to the uh, third week of November. So I will be doing my wrap up for this particular readathon after I come back, which is in the fourth week of November. I have spoken to one of the hosts, or in fact, to three or four of the hosts, and they have uh, said that yes, it is fine. So, and they are okay with it. So I will be doing the um, wrap up for this uh, once I come back. But um, this is a very, very exciting readathon. I'm quite excited about it and it starts on the 18th of October so I will get back to you uh, once I start completing um, and before I leave for the um, festival which I'm going to which is the Valley from the last week of October till the third week of November and uh, till then you take care and have a good reading week ahead and namaste